The fourth step that we want to consider in managing our people with tinnitus is the connection between tinnitus and stress. We know that as I mentioned earlier, that when a person is fearful about their tinnitus, it triggers an emotional reaction. And we there's a part of our brain that I'm going to show you in a moment that's called the limbic system that is the region of our brain that is responsible for dealing with emotional situations. We have something called a, a, a sympathetic nervous system that for example, tends to really alert or arouse people. And we have something called a parasympathetic nervous system that tends to relax or calm people. What our goal is, is to get these things in balance. When a person is fearful of their tinnitus, their sympathetic nervous system goes out of balance. It's more active than the parasympathetic nervous system. And we want to change that. We can all relate to some of these stress situations and what goes on in our body. An example that I use is if you're driving along the street and a policeman pulls up behind you, all of a sudden, you know, you see those sirens, you see, you hear, I should say, you hear the sirens, you see the lights flashing. Lots of changes take place in your body. Your heart starts to beat fast. Your hands start to perspire. You, your mouth gets dry. And this is because your limbic system is creating a response, a defensive response, so that you could be ready to try to deal with this potential threat, so that you could think of a good excuse for why you were speeding or something like that. But this is called our fight or flight syndrome, where we or our brain tells our body to have more adrenaline going to our hands and our feet so that we could either fight the, the potential threat or we could flee from the potential threat. Stress occurs when this sympathetic nervous, act, um, nervous system becomes overactive. When it happens, there's a number of hormones released, which you can see on the screen. Chronic stress is not good for your body. Acute stress is good. Acute stress you need in order to take a test, in order to perform at a certain level. Having some degree of stress is important for us as human beings. But when it's acute, but I'm sorry, when it's chronic stress, when it's there all the time, and if, for example, a person interprets tinnitus as being horribly dangerous to them, that's going to induce chronic stress. And chronic stress is going to have a significant effect on your physiology. The limbic system is a part of your brain that's located smack dab in the middle of it, and it consists of a number of structures, but the two most important structures are the amygdala and the hippocampus. The hippocampus being a part of the brain that stores and retrieves memories, and the amygdala being a part of the brain that in interprets the threat and decides whether or not neurotransmitters such as adrenaline and cortisol and noradrenaline need to be released to deal with this threat. If we can accept the fact that stress induces physiologic changes and that tinnitus is impacted by stress, we could then start to think of ways to cut down the stress. And by the way, you will find that 99% of your clients that you ask when you're nervous, when you're stressed, does your tinnitus increase? They will say, yes, it does. So it's a, it's a pretty safe avenue for you to go down in talking to your clients about the relationship between stress and tinnitus.